so good to us. You're so beautiful to us. I thank you, Father God. I thank you. Now I thank you for your wisdom, for your revelation. I thank you for a word of knowledge. That the eyes of our heart would be open and we would receive the truth and the truth would set us free. Do you agree? Amen. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, God is good. I think, I think this tonight is one of the best studies we've had so far. Amen. I think this is, it's the best one so far. Ellie, move up here. Okay. Move up. Get you. He just said to do that, so I'm going to listen to him. The more, the more we listen to God's voice, the more we know his voice. Amen. We know that, don't we? Yeah. Yes. Now, does everybody have a book? If you need it, borrow a book. You can borrow mine for tonight. No? Everybody need, has one. Okay. Well, let's get right into us to this study because I don't know if we're going to finish this one tonight. But we're going to get into it because this is one of the, to me, it's one of the most delicious. Okay? Now, I'm, I'm thinking of feeding our spirit. You know how you feed your flesh? Like I made dinner tonight and Kenny said, that was really good. We fed, fed our flesh. But now we feed our spirit. And when you feed your spirit, the only thing you can focus is on Jesus. Because when you praise and worship him, all of a sudden things just open up and you have a better understanding of what's going on. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. So let's, let's get into it and let's just do it. Um, Pastor Kenny, you want to start to pray? And let's uh, pray. Uh, read, and, and I'm going to stop you here and there, and because we're going to really amplify, magnify some of the things, because you've already got it. All right? I'm, I'm going to say this while you're preparing. Um, what was all done at the cross? What was all done? I can't hear you. Everything. 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 Thank you. Everything. What was everything done at the cross? Were you healed at the cross? Yes. yes. Were you made wealthy at the cross? Yes. Did you have peace at the cross? Yes. yes. Did you have joy at the cross? Yes. Were your children in order? Were your yes. grandchildren in order? Yes. yes. Ooh, then it's already done. Amen. Yes. Now we've got to find out what to do with it, right? Yes. And some of you have read this already, and you know exactly what I'm talking about. We, we have to make room and yeah. move this in a little bit. Couple more chairs. Did he? What do you mean? Bring, bring a chair up. Yep. Get him in there. Okay. The prime. Now, we know, we know that Jesus already accomplished at the cross everything we have need of. Everything. You got it. Yes. You got that. That song is just really good. Because devil, not today. Amen. 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 Never. All right. So, Pastor Kenny, would you step? Now, who needs a book? Do you need to share a book? Do you have a book? No. Okay. No, you no. share that with Mark there, please. <clears throat> and we're on chapter 12, lesson 12. <clears throat> the primary. Okay. Page, page. 89. 89. One. 89. Yeah. Got it. The primary purpose of prayer. Are they there? Yes. Sure they are. No, they're not. Just give no. them a minute, darling. <laughs> they want to lick, heat these feeding and solace. That's usually me, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Fall is here, almost. But Christmas will be here soon. <laughs> All right. We just got fall. All right. Okay. All right. Primary purpose of prayer. We're going to get this. Go ahead. Prayer is communion with God. It's fellowship, relationship, and intimacy with him. Prayer is conversation. It's a dialogue two-way, not a monologue one-way. Prayer is both talking and listening. 95% of the time I spend in prayer, I'm just thanking, loving, praising, appreciating, hanging out with the Lord. Nothing special or dramatic. 
The vast majority of prayer is simply visiting with God. Now, that is prayer. Mm -hmm. That is prayer. Now, when you, when you get up in the morning and you look outside now and you look at the colors, mm -hmm. you look at how Dee and Debbie did, you and Dee Dee did that. Yeah, Dee Dee and Debbie. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> the decorating, because the orange takes us from one season into the next. And otherwise, people, there's a lot of people, I've said this before, that are depressed. There are, and this is the time of the year where they'll start questioning and they'll go like this here. That could be a manic depressive. And they're, they're going to have a lot of trouble in life if they don't learn to focus on God and praise God. But their emotions, well, I don't know. I want to do this. Well, I don't know. I don't, do you understand? Did you ever meet somebody like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I've met a lot of people like that. I met myself a long time ago. Okay. When you look outside and you see the trees, you see the sky, you see the birds. Look at everything from now on. And that is a promise of God. We understood that's a promise of God. What I mean by that is when he spoke the world into existence, he spoke the seed, he, the seed, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I have a seed, pretend I have a tomato here. Pretend that I got a pumpkin here. Whatever I got. Inside of that fruit is a seed. Is that true? Yes. yes. And that can produce. So it produces after its own kind, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so now we look and we say that tree just didn't pop up. That tree had to come after its own kind. So that's a promise from God that his word is the seed. And when you speak the word, you voice activate it because that seed is alive. In the seed, it's alive. All right, in Israel, they found some in caves that was 2,000 and some years old. They're planting it, they're watching it very carefully. They, they said it's growing. Mm -hmm. The seed is in the seed. The seed that's in you when it was, when Adam and Eve, um, God created them, what did he do? He he put his seed inside of him. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is flesh, but he took his seed and he breathed it into them because now they reproduce and we reproduce, don't we? Mm -hmm. The seed is in the seed. Mm -hmm. Now, when I say again, at the cross, what did Jesus do? He already healed you. He already made you wealthy. He already gave you peace. He already gave you everything. And when you look again at the trees, at the grass, at the flowers, you look at that, and that's a reminder of what he's all done for you. Mm -hmm. Meaning that the seed is in the seed, because the word of God is the seed, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, let's go on, because you can look at things, and you can just start praising him. You look at a picture of a waterfall. Oh. Like I brought home a big picture last year, was it? Yeah from Florida, and it's the ocean. It's the ocean and the beach. And I look at that, and it just, I know that God did that, and he's holding the water there. It's not overtaking the building we're stay, well, <laughs> the way the floods are, some of it's kind of overtaken. But you know what I'm saying? Look at all those things, even the rocks, and you think, he said, even the rocks will Everything that has a name has a seed. But Pastor Jan, a rock. Jesus Christ was the rock, the cornerstone. You see how that's all fitting? And he reproduces. So when you look at rocks, you think that Jesus Christ is the rock of my salvation. And he continues. Am I getting too deep? He continues. He continues, continues with his word. He never stops. 
correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, let's read the next paragraph. There have been times when I stood and taken authority over the devil, done warfare, bound and loose, and seen miracles happening because of it. But all of this is just a tiny part of my prayer life as a whole. Yet these things are normally thought as if they are very important. People hear me minister on prayer as a primary loving God and immediately respond, Oh no, that's too simple. We need to be strong in prayer by regularly doing all these other things. I totally disagree. Most teaching on prayer today centers on how to request and receive something from God. It's all about getting your prayers answered, and if you're really spiritual, how to receive answers for, for other people too, intercession. Although it's, in, it's appropriate to ask for your needs to be met, John 16, 24, this should only be a very small part of your prayer life. If it's your primary focus, then it's also one of the main reasons your prayers aren't very effective. Asking and receiving is one purpose of prayer, but it's definitely not the purpose of prayer. God wants to meet your needs, but seeking to receive something from him shouldn't dominate your prayer life. Okay, what is he saying here? What is Andrew Womack saying here? Because it's true. Who has an opinion on that? What, what did this say to you? It's a relationship with God isn't built on um, your request to him. It's built on your communing with him and talking to him and letting him talk to you and you listening. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? When you focus on your needs and your wants, you're not focused on God, and God should be your main focus. Oh, that's good, too. Anybody else? There's one over there. If you think about your relationship with your child, um, you, you, like, you want to bless them, but you don't want that to be the only focus that that's they right. have with you. Right, right. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. Also, that's really good. Because I was thinking about this today. We, Kenny, we were talking last night about our courting years, okay? And just kind of laughing at some of the stuff. But when we were focused on each other, we didn't know Jesus Christ. We were focused on each other. We weren't focused on Jesus. He didn't know what he was getting into. I didn't know what I was getting into. Well, he says to me, well, I got a good deal, Jan. No, no, that I got a good deal. Oh, That's said, right. No. Get that straight. <laughs> I said, well, you didn't know the, the work you had here. You didn't know the mess you were, because we were focusing just on each other, but not on what was going on. Does that make sense? And then you fall in love. Now, when you have Jesus Christ, you focus that on him, and all these things will come. What does he say? Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all of these things will be given unto you. That's why you're praising and worshiping him. That's why I, I tell you this over and over. I've, and Pastor Kenny, am I telling the truth? You come home a lot when I'm there, and I've got music playing. Yeah. I've got music playing. Um, I have good songs, you know what I mean? What, what am I doing? I'm praising and worshiping him. I'm being proactive, okay? To keep my focus on him so that if something happens, I've got my focus on him and he'll take care of that. It's already finished. Make sense? Okay, let's read on a little bit and go from here. Add it supernaturally. If you people, if you made the main thing the main, if you made the main thing the main thing, loving, worshiping, and fellowshipping with God as your primary purpose in prayer, you soon discover that you won't have as many needs. When you seek first God's kingdom, things are just supernaturally added to you. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what shall we eat or what shall we drink? Nor yet for your body, what shall we put on? It's not the life more than meat and the body than raiment. Matthew 6, 25. Lost people are completely occupied with the purpose of what to eat, what to wear, where to live, and so on. But believers shouldn't be that way. God is fully aware of your need for those physical things. But he's commanded you to seek E first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. As
As you do, all these things shall be added unto you. Matthew 6, 33. When you're passionately in love with God, he takes care of you supernaturally, better than you could ever take care of yourself. By literally living to love him, you release your powerful spiritual dynamics that positively affect the flow of provisions in your life. Most people can't wrap their brains around this truth because it's simply too far outside the realm of experience. It just floats right over their heads. I'm not talking about making your family or career the main thing and loving God on the side or merely having him add an extra quality to your life side. I mean that God is your complete focus, the very center of your life. Now, I'm, I'm going to say this again. Take and start looking around you. Just look around you. When you walk outside, even when you look at the sky and you see the stars and you see the moon, you understand what I'm saying? You see God in it. Because he spoke it into existence and it's still the same yesterday, today, and forever. Okay? Then especially, I get excited over a rainbow. Do you realize that, that lately, the last couple of years, I, and maybe it's just me, but there's double rainbows? Mm -hmm. What do you think that is? I never saw that years and years ago. Why do you think that is? Double blessings. See, God doesn't accidentally do things. He purposely does it to show himself to us. Because he wants us to love him so much instead of loving ourselves. Remember the book, Self-Centeredness? When you, I, uh, in fact, Tracy, our baby today was born today, Tracy. And so her and Kim are the same age for a month. We were busy. <laughs> and, 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 and so I, I was focusing on that today. How one day, here you, that baby is not here. It's here. But it's not here in your arms. And, you know, when the baby's inside you, you feel that baby's, you know it's coming. The husband feels that it's coming. He knows that baby's coming as well. And then all of a sudden the baby's born. And all of your emotions, you just start crying and just, oh, he or she's so beautiful. And when you really look at them, ooh, 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 ooh. the nose is squashed down, the head is kind of going, ooh. But as far as you're concerned, that's the most beautiful baby in the whole world. Isn't that the truth? Mm -hmm. And I was looking at it today, and I thought, Lord, how can that? Two people come together because the seed is in the seed and we can love it. What an awesome thing that God has given to us. So he put the seed of his word inside of us now when you got born again. Wow. Let's go on and think on that a little bit more, okay? Go ahead, Pastor Penny. It's off? You're off, Kim. Okay, Debbie, why don't you grab it while he's getting off? Oh. I'm going to read that again. Okay. For most Christians, the Lord is just another addition to their already busy lives. Their focus is on making a living, raising their kids, maintaining their residence, acquiring more creative, creative uh, creature, com comfort, creature yeah. comforts, and doing more other temporal activities. On the side, they try to add God into the mix, but he's definitely not the center. They work their tails off because the burden of producing wealth remains on their shoulders. Stress out, they constantly struggle, on, struggle under cares because they're the ones always trying to make ends meet. However, when God is truly the center of your life, everything else works out. The Lord makes it work supernaturally. It can't explain how, but it's kingdom principle. When God prospers you, it's everless, effortless. Yet I've met very few Christians who are truly into this divine flow. When your whole heart is simply, God, I love you, you'll find that he has many ways of working things out. Praise changes perspective. 
people. Now, who wants to comment on any of this here? Do you want to comment on any of this here that you just read? Did you ever, you know, okay, you've got this little baby. Let's look at the little baby again. Okay. And that first week that you're just, you're just so in love with that little thing. You just, oh, you forget about all the pain you might have went through. You forget about how it was uncomfortable babies for that last month. We understand, don't we? Mm -hmm. Or when you go 14 days overdue, like they figured that I was doing, okay? Then you got Kim. She had Cordell, a big old 10 pound, one ounce baby boy. Supernatural childbirth. How can you not have this excruciating pain and the end taking only 15 minutes? How can that be? Because that's the way God designed it to be because we found out supernatural childbirth redeemed from the curse. We need to find out those things so that we can live and move in them and then we'll have a testimony and be able to help other people. Because so many women that we've talked to say, boy, I wish, don't you wish you had that with your first one, Jesse? Oh, yeah. Because your other ones were easier. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah. Why'd you quit? <laughs> <laughs> well, remember, Keegan is here because I'm praying. <laughs> I had um, a desire in my heart. Basically, I look at this paragraph that we just read, and looking at it from the ministerial part of what I find is um, people make every excuse possible that they can find to not give an hour or an hour and a half to a study or to a church service. I'm too busy for that, or my life is, you know, okay, that's, that's great. I know everybody's got things going on, they're busy, but it comes back to what are we willing to give to God? You know, we, we take everything else and we set God off to the side. Yes. So. You know, I look at Pastor Kenny, I don't think anybody can keep up to him. I am not kidding you. And this morning we had a nice long Bible study. Last night he taught the men's study here. You know, and it, God is good. But I'm going to tell you this right now. The more time you put into God, the more time he's going to give you. But things are going to go easier in that time, so you're not going to have to spend so much time doing things. It's, it works. It works. It's amazing when you pray in tongues. Now, remember the board again? Mm -hmm. What happens when you pray in tongues? Do you remember what I was talking about? Nobody remembers? On Sunday? One thing that just stood out to me. That when you pray in tongues is 100 to 200 times stronger than morphine. Now that is tremendous. Because I think about when I was had the C-section and I took morphine for a bit and how it knocked out the pain and they said 100 to 200 times. That's awesome. Yeah. When we realize what God has done to pray in tongues, how powerful it is. But we don't do it because we don't see the real value of it. But once you see the value of praying in tongues, you say, wait a minute, this is to edify me. But I'm going to ask for the interpretation of my tongues as well. You're going to find yourself having more peace. You're going to find yourself things are going to go easier. You're going to find things are going to happen that you didn't even ask God for. Because that's a praise and worship as well by praying in the spirit just like when you're you're singing in songs and you're praising and you're worshiping him what is happening god is meeting meeting every one of our needs because we are praising and worshiping because that's what we were made to do that was lucifer's job when he fell then we took over 
And God said, I will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory, not ours. Mm -hmm. That's all we have to do is seek first him in every situation. So just think, here you get up in the morning, you start to pray in the spirit. You, you pray in your natural tongue. You know, just start praising him and thanking him. And you know, you're gonna to get to the point where you, you're not gonna to have to ask him much because he's gonna supply it all. It's just gonna come, okay? So when you're praising and worshiping God, and all of a sudden you're praising and worshiping, and you start to pray in tongues. And the other, the other, <laughs> the other day, I was praising, I was praying in tongues, and I didn't, not but even two minutes, and I started laughing and laughing and laughing. There was such a joy. I mean, I had joy before, but the joy was just overtaking me. And the peace that surpasses all understanding that comes. And it's amazing. I found two things I couldn't find for a couple months. I had prayed about it, asked, you know, show me where it is. And then you know how you forget about it? There it was. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. God said, I'll take care of you. You just praise and worship me because then I come on the scene and I can fulfill even the desires of your heart. Isn't that good? Mm -hmm. Anybody else want to say anything? Add to yeah. that? Well, I can, I can testify to it. Your dad always used a term he worked so hard. He, he said, I worked so hard in my sleep last night, I woke up tired this morning. <laughs> yeah. That was dad. <laughs> you know, as I've aged and after, you know, I, you know, I've gotten more involved with what's going on with the business and stuff than when I was younger. I kind of just let it all slide. But now, all of a sudden, I'd, I'd wake up 2 o'clock in the morning or something and the wheels start turning. I'm thinking about this and that, and I start thinking, I'm, I'm like her dad. I wake, I'm gonna wake up in the morning because I work so hard, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> so, so basically, I've been doing now, when I'm waking up like that and I start thinking, well, uh, gotta do this, gotta do that, instead of trying to take that all upon myself, I start praying in tongues. I, I would like to, uh, praise and worship, but my singing bothers myself, so I can't do that. So, so, so I, pray, I pray in tongues. I want to sing on the worship team, but Debbie won't let me, but, but now I know why, Debbie. But anyway, I pray, start praying in tongues, and, and like you said, that peace comes over you, and, you, know, and, and uh, you can put aside those cares of the day. You know, you can wait until you get up and get going, then take care of those cares. But then you just got to remember, give them to God. <laughs> yeah, so. And you know, when you pray in tongues, or when you just start praising him, all of a sudden you realize, um, I can't remember what I wanted to pray for. It's already finished. Mm -hmm. Remember, at the cross, Jesus Christ finished, he healed you, he made you wealthy, he gave you joy, he gave you peace, he gave you every gift. It's already finished. Okay, let's go on. Anybody else? Yes, give it to Dixie. Oh, there comes one. Praying in tongues also boosts your immune system. Yes. Especially now that we're stuck inside more. Yes. It will keep, keep you well. Yes. Yeah. The endorphins start to move. And it does, it does, it boosts your immune system. So when you think of that, wow, God is so good. He's given us everything. We just have to find out what he's given us and, and, and just do it, be a doer of the word. Okay, you wanna go on, Kenny? Praise changes perspective. People tell me, Andrew, it doesn't seem like your feathers ever get ruffled about any, anything. Things go wrong, but it just doesn't phase you. It's true. When we were in the process of purchasing a new facility, the contract appeared to be falling through. Again, I wasn't bothered by it because I loved God and knew he'd work it out somehow. 
It was just another annoyance, hindrance, and pain. All the devil can do is aggravate you. He can't stop anything. Staying up half the night bombarding heaven wouldn't have helped. So I just went to bed. I wasn't going to let it change my life. The next day I was informed that things had worked out and we were back on track. Hallelujah. Hmm. Dear prayer. Gee, God doesn't sleep, does he? No. no. Thank God that we do so he can work without us getting in the way. Amen. Okay. Your perspective changes when you put God first by praising him. Many of your cares cease to be problems anymore. As you spend time with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, his attitude becomes your attitude. The entire way a thing changes because of his influence. You aren't even bothered by the things that upset others and cause them to spend days, weeks, months, and even years praying about it. When a problem arises, many people feel like they have to fix them. Personally, I don't feel like I have to fix a thing. God is my source, and I keep my focus on him in the face of adversity. I tell my staff, you, hi you hide and watch. I'll seek first his kingdom, and everything will work out. When the dust settles, we'll look back and say, God bless us, and it was awesome how he did it. Now, how many of you have done that? Have done that, and would you like to tell us about it? Help us to understand how you did it and what happened, because I can tell you all day. Because that's, remember I told you with my breast, what did I do, what did I do? Agreement? Mm -hmm. And what did I do every day? Praise Praise God. God. I praised and worshiped God. While I'm praising and worshiping, he does the work. Mm -hmm. No, no, he's already done the done work. Done the work. It's already finished. And when you're praising and worshiping him, you don't get concerned about the flesh. You don't get concerned about all this stuff. Because you're praising and worshiping. Right? Mm -hmm. Even when I went in to have, to my doctor, when I went, because I had to go to the doctor to go to get an ultrasound. Even when I went in there and I'm waiting for her, I'm just praising and worshiping and looking around and think, what a beautiful Thank you so much for life and abundance. And it's just flowing. I can't find nothing, Jan. I know. Then when I went, well, that was on, on the end of June and then, or May. And then June 3rd, when I went for the ultrasound, I got in that room. And you know how you got to get in there and wait? Mm -hmm. I was in there praising and worshiping, just having a good time. Came in, did the ultrasound, left. When she's gone as well, I'm praising and worshiping. And then I'm not thinking about what's happening. I have got my focus on him. And the guy comes in there and he's smiling and he says, we can't find anything. I know. And he's kind of like puzzled. You know, you know what I mean? It's like, who are you? He didn't say that, but you get the gist of it. Mm -hmm. But... Who took care of it for me when we agreed together in prayer? Thank God. God. It was already finished because my healing was already done at the Amen. cross. Got it? Amen. Amen. Anybody want to, to go ahead? I oh, okay. Does anybody want to say where, when they had the peace, okay, they praised and worshiped or listened to music or just praise God. Nobody? Nobody? Remember the time that I called you when I was in Florida? Um, Put the mic up like this. It was, it had been a confrontation during a tea party downtown that I confronted a liberal doctor for what he was saying. And I told him, I said, that's not true. You do not do that, because I worked under you. And it wasn't more than a couple weeks later that I got zapped for the IRS and the state of Wisconsin. Yes. And it was a two-year battle. Mm -hmm. And it could have been a $75,000 fine, yes. just the fine, not the catch-up. 
and there was nothing. Amen. Amen. And you know, when you look at all the stress, oh, it was that horrible. Brings, that, and now you're going, I'm going to just go to bed. <laughs> it's already finished. Why do I have to worry? Oh. And I don't know why I felt it was okay. I mean, after I talked to you, you told me what to do. Mm -hmm. I did it, and it was okay. Because sometimes when we get in the middle of the ocean, we need somebody to, to come oh, out there and help absolutely. us. I couldn't have done it on my own. There's no way. Yeah. God is good, isn't he? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was wonderful. Amen. God is good. Anybody else? Well, I shared this in women's Bible study, and um, just wanted to share a little bit about my mom, of course, me, my sister, um, am I good? Okay. <laughs> um, when was it? So me and my, my sister, well, anyway, we came into agreement maybe many years ago for my mom yes. that she needed to be with my sister. Um, my mom's um, health was starting to deteriorate and um, I, you were one of the first persons that saw that when, when she came. She was on a low-fat diet, and she had went from a size 14 to a size 6. Um, I don't know how many months it was, and me and my sister were looking like, he, she doesn't look good, like this skinny. She's really skinny, and she doesn't look good. But anyway, um, so we had came into agreement several years later because my mom needed to be out of the house, out of the situation that she was in, because she had she had symptoms of Alzheimer's. And we had come into agreement a while ago on that. And um, nothing was happening the way I wanted to see it happening. And um, two weeks ago, my brother went down because my, 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 my dad had some issues. And when he went down, everything hit the fan, everything was starting to come out, and my mom was able to leave with my dad's blessing and go with my, my sister to stay there while she's healing. So it's totally a blessing. Um, my um, nephew sent me a text message as they were leaving because my sister likes to travel at, late at night. So they left at 12 at night and he was like, come on grandma, we're going home now. It's about, oh, he said, it's about time. We're going home. And for him to say that, it was very prof prophetic. It's about time, because it had been about time like eight or nine years ago. <laughs> it was about time. Mm -hmm. So it was just a blessing. And um, yeah, so now she can get the help that she needs mm -hmm. and spiritual help as well. So. I think, can I, I'm, I'm going to add to this because I think the wonderful thing about this is in August, I believe when we were in um, Colorado Springs, Mm -hmm. at Womack's that, or when did you and Steve go to your parents? So for my mom's birthday, we went August 8th for my mom's birthday. I had no intentions of going to Georgia because really I was like, you know what, Nikki, let's just meet halfway in the middle because I just want to have a good time and have fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't want to deal with like just the stuff that was going on down there. I'm like, let's just meet in the middle. And she was like, she was with the plan at first, and then her husband was like, you mean to tell me you're going to meet halfway in the middle, then you're going to go see your see mom, and then come back up here? And, and he was like, that doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Why are you guys doing this? <laughs> so we wind up, okay, both of us are going to see mom. It was August 8th for her birthday. And so they're there. She's discerning something. Her sister is not discerning it. But she's discerning it. She got the ball moving. Can I say it that way? Then her brother came, and he kept the ball moving. And then her sister came, and she finished the ball moving. You see how God took the three children, put them into agreement, and they each had what they needed. To, they each had the appointment of what they needed to do in that situation. And how long did that take? A week and a half? Um, yeah. It felt like more than a week, but it was less than a week <laughs> that it all came into pass, came to pass like that, and it was awesome. And all, and the thing is, we, me, you know, like all your sisters and brothers, you have different anointings, and to have when you when you're operating in those anointings, 
and to know your place and know what that person is strong in. Because I know my sister's so strong in certain things, I'm strong in certain things, and my brother is. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we needed my brother to be on board with us this time. And he got on board with us. So that was a blessing. Because mm -hmm. he needed to come in there, because he talks to dad man to man. Whereas we couldn't talk certain things that we say. We don't now. have that level of influence. <laughs> What's that? Be careful now. Oh, well, <laughs> is that bad? <laughs> I'm not trying to make <laughs> But he, he can come in there and talk to dad a different way than the girls can. Yes. <laughs> I, I just, you know, what's wonderful is when we prayed, God did the work. Amen. That's M meaning to bring her there, to bring her sister there, and then to later bring her brother there, and then her sister back there, and then to be able to take the van, and Daddy blesses taking the van to move, to drive Mama to New Jersey, and even give the daughter money for gas, which just a few days prior, he didn't want that. Mm -mm. But it went bang, bang, bang. But remember, when you pray, God has already got it all figured out for you. Just praise him then. Praise him. Do you have to re-pray it? He's already, he's not schizophrenic. He's already got it, right? And he's already did it for you. We just have to fall into line and follow him. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you did. And not getting your emotions in the way, because your emotions want to get really high, and um, your emotions want to get really high, and then it's like, okay, I have to stick on, I'm trusting in God right now. We prayed this out, so you know, things are going to hit the fan, and they don't always work, look the way you think they should look at the time, but at the end of the day, you know you won the battle, so it's going to come out. Yes. I think the biggest thing, again, you were in the water. The biggest thing is, is I, the part that I felt God gave me is to keep you stable. Not, no, we don't have to pray about that. He should, right. We've already prayed. It's already finished. Good. And just being built up and staying built up. Because when you're fighting, you, you know, your senses want to get in the way. But when you've got somebody that can help you and say, stop it, it's already done, Keisha. Okay, I got it, I got yes, it. Yes, and you had to keep saying that to me because I wanted to like, okay, we need to pray for something else. Yep. There's something else is not, it's like your mind, your intellect wants to say it's not because you see the circumstances. It doesn't seem like it's working the way it needs to be. So there's something else, something else that needs to be prayed on because that's what your intellect wants to say. But you know it's finished, but your intellect or your emotions want to get in there and say, no, I didn't do enough, and get into the begging mode, which right. you know it's done. Right. And then to see the peace with Daddy. Because Daddy was in a convalescent home. He had broken his hip. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. So he wasn't at home, so that was difficult on him and on the kids as well. But look at how God took care of it all. It's just trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he promises you'll make, he'll make your path straight. Then he says, don't be wise in your own eyes, Keisha. You see? He tells us all that. Don't be wise in your own eyes. I already got this taken care of at the cross. See, we, I got to do something. I got to do something. That's the way... The five senses tell us to do it, right? Mm -hmm. I don't got to do nothing mm -hmm. but praise and worship and just sit back and watch him and go, wow. I got it. I'm not going to give you this testimony now because it's working its way out. This person called me the other day and something so fabulous happened in her life. She could hardly even talk. I said, wait a minute, isn't that what we prayed for? I know it, I know it, but no, 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 that's what we prayed. You guys don't know her. We prayed. She said, I know, but, got it, got it? 
No, we already prayed. Why are you so surprised? When you pray, we get surprised because it's not going the way we want it. It's even going better than what we could imagine. Yeah. It, it, didn't it? Yeah. It went better than... And expecting more. Yeah, amen. It gets better and better and better. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, Nikki's got her there, and she's got health care people. She had her the next day to the dentist getting her teeth cleaned. And, mm -hmm. you know, that girl did. She moves it, moves it, moves it. She does. Isn't that awesome? And then the 16-year-old, Malachi, he is good with Grandma, knows how to use the lift and everything from being there. And it, it, that's just his heart. Yeah, it's Malachi's heart. It's he's just the sweetest young man, but he's got such a heart, and he wants to thank people and appreciate people. Okay. God is on the move. He's already in it. Whatever is going on in your life, it is already finished at the cross. Go to the cross, which is the Bible, and find out where the promise is and agree with it because it's already finished. Okay? All right. All right. Anybody else want to share? No? Okay. Where are we, Pastor Kenny? We're on I Never Ask God for Money. If you put God first and just love him, you wouldn't have to spend much time asking him for financing. What do you think about that? That's quite a statement, would you say? Hmm. Yeah, but God, yeah, but wait a minute. Let's just see what happens here. There's just a supernatural divine flow. In the summer of 2005, Andrew Walmack Ministries needed 720000 a month just to break even. That's $24,000 a day just to do what we were doing. It took $1,000 an hour every hour every day of every week. And that, was, and that was years ago. Our cost has increased since then. Yet it's been decades since I asked the Lord for any money. I never ask God for money. I don't pray for him to increase our income. I just say, God, since we need more money, I must be thinking too small. I need to start increasing my vision. Then I meditate on the scriptures about God supplying my needs. I don't pray, push, pull, beg, or plead with him for more money. If we run into a financial bind, I'll make sure that I'm not doing something in my flesh. Once I'm convinced that I'm doing what he told me to do, I'll just start encouraging myself that God is my source. I tell myself, God is faithful. I'll even use scripture and preach to myself, but I don't ever ask him for money. That might seem weird to you, but the word says, seek first the kingdom of God, and all those things will be added to you. I spend decades without asking the Lord for a penny, yet he's blessing our ministry more than ever before. It's working a whole lot better than my asking and begging. In prayer, pray, I just say, Father, I love you. You're the center of my life. If you would just worship and fellowship with him, he would supernaturally add everything you need. You wouldn't have to know how to bind poverty and all those other things because you do better accidentally than you ever done, or per, done on purpose. Okay, now that's, that's hard to wrap your mind around. It really is. Unless you wrap it around, it's already finished. What are you smiling so much for? <laughs> you want to give tips? We don't get a chance to testify. <laughs> Testimony. <laughs> testify? She's a... She's as blessed to the Lord. I know I could see it on her when yeah. I walked in tonight. Yeah. She just can't help it. You know what? She got a hold of the word of God. She's she, like that. And she ain't going to let go. No. <laughs> I mean, she's just, she's got that sister named Stacy. <laughs> <laughs> she went and got around with her. You know what yeah. happened? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, it's kind of like, you know, it's good. What I, what I, want, I, want, to, I want to stop here. Okay, because it's too much to, to swallow. Has God already supplied all of your needs according to his riches and glory at the cross? Yes. Has he supplied yes. all of your money already? Has yes. he supplied all of your healing? Yes. Yes. Has he supplied your joy? Yes. 
This yeah. has supplied salvation for your children and yeah. your grandchildren yeah. and your mates and your parents and all. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This is this is something I wrote out. In in Proverbs eighteen ten. Would somebody look that up, please? I have it here, but I'll just have it. Proverbs eighteen ten. The more you learn about who you are in Jesus, the more excited you become. You understand that? Now, everybody got their, their email, right, with this number 12? Mm -hmm. Okay, if you don't get it, let us know and we'll send it to you. You got it? No. no. Okay, we'll make sure that you get number 12. Mm -hmm. Okay? No, you got it. Got it, yeah. yeah. Read it. Grab yeah. that microphone. Get it up there and read it nice and loud. 1810, you said? 1810. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. Okay, so he's a strong tower. You run into that strong tower. How do you get in there? You're already in there when you're born again. Okay? How do you release your promises? How do you do that after reading this here? Who wants to answer that? How do you release it? Praying in tongues. Praying in tongues. That's one of them. By what praising, else? praising him and having conversation and just fellowshipping with him. There you go. There you go. Now, you voice activate the promises of God. That's what gets it done. Okay. Listen. Is, is there? There's stuff going on in the heavenlies violence, isn't there, mm -hmm. against the enemy, right? Mm -hmm. Is God judging our country? No. no. Mm -mm. Man is sinning, and this is what is happening. If he was judging our country, there'd be a real problem. We've got enough of a problem what's going on right now. Is that true? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And when you have an opportunity, thank you, Lord, pray in the spirit for Judge Kavanaugh. Amen. But what do they really, I'll, I'll just break in here and say this, what do they really want to do? What are they really doing by coming after Judge Kavanaugh and lying? Anybody know? Take, take it. Take the, nice and loud, right in that microphone. What they're hoping to do is to slow it down, stop it, so that after the midterms, hopefully there's enough of them to knock out a conservative justice. So if they can do it with him, they can do it with anybody. They could do it with the next one. And there's three people now. Yeah. Now, isn't that something? But guess what? Guess what? Ain't going to work. See, they, these gals are going down. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Anybody that's born again that is standing with our president because our president is born again, he speaks in tongues, God has assigned him, people that come up against him are in big trouble. Amen. Okay? Amen. And, and am I going to pray for them? No. No, I'm not. I'm not. Here, Lord, I give them to you. Okay? But I can pray in the spirit Okay, and we want to make sure. And Dee Dee, did you give that that uh, CD or that DVD to play in the bookstore? Which one? Okay, it first of all it was uh, CPR. That one has been playing in there. Did you have it on before? Yeah. Okay, so we'll put that on tonight after. Okay. But it's also Michelle Bachman is on with George mm -hmm. Pearson. And who's the guy's name on? David Bartman. No, no, not David Bartman. The other gentleman. Anyway, oh, they're on and they're talking about how important it is to vote in November. It is very important to vote in November and that you tell other people. That's like when our grandkids turned 18, I was getting after them. Go and vote, go and vote, go and vote. Right? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. But pray in the spirit for people because you don't know how you have to pray. Okay, so now we're back to this. So we can run into the strong tower, which is Jesus Christ, right? Mm -hmm. 
So whenever you have a situation, so now what do we say? By the stripes of Jesus, we were healed. It was all done at the cross. Your wealth, your health, your peace, your joy, everything was done at the cross. Right? Yeah. Okay. You praise him to release and overcome your emotions. Because our emotions want to, I don't know about you guys, but did you ever feel sorry for yourself? Never? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You feel sorry for yourself. There's nobody that I got to do everything around me. I'm so, you never did that. Now I'm like, I'm just going to get it done. Who cares? Who didn't or, you know, like I'll lift stuff around here and say, who lifted that? And I say, I did. I told you not to do that. He's, he's a man's man where he doesn't want me to do things that he feels a man should do. That's just the way we operate, you know. I like that look. So, so how do we pray? This is how Jesus taught his disciples to address the problems directly that you have and I have. Not to speak to God about the problem. Oh God, I got this going on and got it. Oh God, you know how sick I've been. Oh God, you know how my husband, he just, he just gets me so mad. Um, them kids, I just want to... Mm. No, no. You're talking about the problem to God. That's not what you're supposed to do. All right? Because you're saying, Jesus, you didn't take care of it at the cross. You're believing that it's a problem and he didn't take care of it. But once you get the realization that he took care of it at the cross, okay, then you understand how to pray. So, not, not to speak to God about it. This means we don't pray, please, Father, heal so-and-so, like, let's say, a broken arm. We lay hands on it. Now think, this is how you do it. We lay hands on that arm and we address the problem directly. You lay hands on it and you address the problem. You lay hands on that arm and address, perhaps, let's pretend it's broken, okay? I lay hands on it and I address that problem directly. I command that arm to be healed in Jesus' name. I am releasing what God has already done through Jesus Christ. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, okay, if somebody's uh, sick, if somebody, I don't care what it is, you lay hands on them. 2,000 years ago, you were healed. I command stomach, you come into order. What did you just release? Healing. healing. You, re you released healing. You released that seed, and that seed went in, and the life is in the seed, and that's the word. The life went into him, and that seed went in, and that is the healing. It's finished. It's produced. It's done. Do you need that again? You got it? Okay. So you, you command it. You command. He said... Command me. That's what God said to do. Command thee me. This is what the disciples did. This is what Jesus did. Right? Mm -hmm. Multiply the loaves. And he did. It just, right? So, we speak to our own ailments as well as we speak over others. Mm-hmm. So if you've got a pain, what do you do? Um, perhaps, let's say, my knee hurts. I just lay that out there. And you say, I demand, 2,000 years ago you were healed, I demand. What am I demanding? Yeah. What am I demanding? Yeah. Pain. I'm demanding it to be healed in Jesus' name. So that seed of the word went in there. That seed is doing the healing, not me, but the seed. The word of God is the seed that goes in and does the work. Okay? 
so we don't beg or plead with God. We command and demand because we're ambassadors here. That's what we're supposed to be doing. He has given us the authority over our own body, and if people want us to agree with them, we can agree. I agree. I agree that your mother is healed. Amen. We did that how long ago? Now we see things happening quickly. And they get surprised. Why are you surprised? I said, we pray for them. We're surprised because, wow, look how you're doing this, God. This is, but that was in the seed when you prayed. That was in the seed when you prayed. That seed contained all that. If I take a tomato and I put that little seed in the ground, like right now, I've got my, my cherry tomatoes. Boy, you should still pay that. I mean, I mean, that bush, I had to cut, and it just keeps on growing. Well, you saw it, didn't you? Mm -hmm. And the cherry tomatoes on it, it just keeps on growing. That came from one seed, and it keeps on producing, keeps on producing. That's one seed, that, that whole plant is in that one seed. Mm -hmm. I had to tie it up. I got three of them up there, I had to tie all of them up. Right? That seed, God's faith is in that tomato seed. God's faith is in there because it's alive and it reproduces. How do I know that? Go back to the Garden of Eden when he spoke, the seed is in the seed and he, the trees, huh? fish produce after their own kind, the trees after their own kind, and so on and so on. The seed is in the seed and it'll keep on going. So when you speak a demand needing need to be healed in Jesus' name, that seed has to heal it because I, I activated that healing with the seed God put in. All right? So now, um, Jesus prayed the same way, so, his, so did the apostles. It will work for us too. Asking and receiving is one purpose, one purpose of prayer, but it's definitely not the, the only purpose for prayer, right? God wants to meet your needs, but seek, seeking to receiving something from him, what are we doing? Praise and worship. But then let's say that I do have, I need money. This is, this is the awesome thing, right? Mm -hmm. We've got the scriptures all laid out. Or if it's healing, you're not praying it. What you're doing it is you're releasing that seed into you. All right? I'll read this here on page 37 of this. It is vital that you speak only the end result and what you desire. Don't counteract the declarations you have spoken in faith. Manifestations may not come immediately. Hold fast to your confession. Do not speak contrary or foolish words. Say what you mean and mean what you say. Speak as if every word you speak will come to pass. Because that seed is in the word you're speaking. And that seed will produce. It has. At the cross, right? Mm -hmm. Then as, it's, as if every word will come to pass. You can fill your heart and mouth with faith by daily voicing scripture confessions. So what am I, what am I going to read these for? Because I'm going to meditate on what he's done. I'm meditating. God has given me all things that pertain to life and godliness. He's already given it to me. See what it's doing? It's, in, it's increasing my faith, the word of God. And I am well able to be, possess all that God has provided for me. What am I doing? I am seeing the word, and this is his promise. And this here little pea brain is going to get it. God is the unfailing, unlimited source of my supply. <gasps> Ooh, I'm releasing right now. My financial income now increases 
as the blessing of the Lord overtake me. I am meditating on what the word says. And I believe what the word says and what does it, what happens to me. It builds my faith and encourages me. The seed is in this word and as I speak it, what's happening? It's voice activated. What is it doing? It's continuing for me to medit I'm meditating on the word and it continues. It continues in my head. I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. I give and it is given unto me good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Oh, I got a hundredfold return coming. Oh, I honor the Lord with my substance and the first fruits of my increase. My barns are filled with plenty. My press is forth for, burst forth into life. See, what you're doing is, is the word of God. Then my God makes all grace abound toward me in every favor and earthly blessing. Wow, God, that you do that. Thank you so much. So that I have all sufficiency for all things, and I abound to every good work. Oh, Daddy, thank you so much. I have that. I, you're meditating on what you've already got inside of you. It's already finished. It's already finished. And the more you do that, I delight myself in you, Lord, and you always give me the desires of my heart. Oh, God, I am filled with the wisdom of God. And I am led to make wise and prosperous financial decisions. Oh, God, thank you because I know you're leading and guiding me. You are so good. Thank you. And in between there, you're going to get excited. You're going to be praising and worshiping him. The spirit of God guides me into all truth regarding my financial affairs. I'm going to take that and I'm going to meditate on those scriptures. I'm going to, I'm going to bring them alive in me and say, I've got them. Oh, Lord, you cause my thoughts to become agreeable to your, to your will. And so my plans are established to succeed. You've already done it. You see what you're doing? You're so focused on him that you can't focus on anything else. And you're having a picnic, a party, you and God, and the Holy Spirit and Jesus. It's already finished. And when you get meditating with that, all of a sudden you don't think about money. You don't think about, oh, man, I got to do it. You just don't. He'll take care of every need. Same thing with healing. When you meditate on what you already have, what does that do to your emotions? Pushes them aside. What does that do to your five senses? Push because now you're concentrating on what you have. You've conscious. The Lord has opened unto me his good treasure. Oh, and he's blessed the works of my hands. Oh my goodness sakes, Lord, you're so quiet. I give all oh, and you give back. God, you're just so good. You 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 know you're really good. You get talking with him like that. I mean, and before you know it, you're, oh my goodness, just on one scripture, that took a half an hour. But you're higher than a kite. He has commanded the blessing upon me in my storehouse and all that I undertake. You do that, you did that, it's already finished. Am I getting too excited? That's how you meditate on the scripture. You see what it says. You see what it says. Oh, I am delivered from the power and the authority of darkness. Yep, I'm born again. I'm God's favorite child. Right now, I cast down reasoning and imaginations that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God, and I bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. What am I doing? You know what's going to happen to me? You know what, I do this, you know. Isn't that something how God always gives me stuff? This nice little scarf, thank you, Stacy. Oh yeah, you don't remember it, but I do. <laughs> the Lord causes my thoughts to become agreeable to his will, and so my plans are established and exceed, succeed. Because, they, you see, when you set your mind on what he's already done and you start working that over in your mind, oh, this is better than I ever thought. So that's why you take your time and do that. And, you know, sometimes, you know, you've got people around like the kids, the little ones, go in the bathroom. Well, I can't do that. They knock on the door. This one woman, she had 12 kids, and she'd sit on her chair and put her apron over her head. Do you remember that true story? Yeah, she'd put her apron over, and when that apron was over the head, 
you know, my mother and it, everything would be going on, but mom is under there and she's praying. Got it? Mm -hmm. So now, um, God wants to meet our needs, right? So when you start remembering what he's already given you, you're releasing the wealth. Healing, you're releasing the healing. Goodness sakes, is that good. Praise and worship for your children. Praise and worship him for your husband, for your wife. Praise and worship him for your, thank you for this car. I'll go around and I'll say, like yesterday afternoon, I said, God, thank you for this beautiful house. Look at that. And my husband, look at the talent he's got. That fireplace. Oh, we God, you are good. I do that. I talk to myself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Right? You know what I really thank you for? That I'm not living in Iran or Iraq or Kuwait. I'm living here in the United States of America. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, who has a testimony? Nobody? I have no idea. Come on over. Oh, you can stay there. Have I got a beat you? Or you have a Okay, I know you have one. <laughs> Amen. Okay, mine is about, um, on Thursday we were doing, we've been doing Andrew Womack's self-centeredness. And I gave a scenario with my husband that I thought he was being very self-centered. <laughs> and then she gave me the scenario that I was being self-centered. It wasn't my husband that was being self-centered. So I'm like, okay. And you, she said, go home and ask God to help you. What did you say? What was the assignment? What was the assignment? Do you remember? No, you got to remember now. It's your story. Okay. <laughs> it's my story. I thought you would remember, though, because you're the teacher. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, so she said, go home. I think this is what she said. I can't say it for verbatim. Go home and ask God to show you where you're self-centered. So when I went home, I, I did that. I just was like, you know how Theophostics, Lord revealed this to me, where am I self-centered? And she had already told me where I was self-centered in this whole scenario anyway, that you, God showed me this not of myself, but it was a situation with my sister. And you know how you can always remember when other people were being self-centered versus yourself being self-centered? And it was a scenario that my sister, when we were in elementary school, she had took this boy's book bag at the end of the day and hid it. And the guy was looking for his book bag and I was, she was, it, he rode the bus. So he was like, where's my book bag? Where's my book bag? And my sister would not give this guy his book bag. I mean, and that scenario was telling me how I was being in the situation with Steve. Because it was on, can I tell you? Yeah, go okay, ahead. Okay, I can tell, I don't mind. But anyway, it was on Tangy. Steve tangy, tangy, likes tangy. to, oh yes, so 2.0 Dr. Wallach's Tangy Tangerine. And Steve likes to take this product all the time. And I wasn't really necessarily thinking how much he, it was helping benefit him, the product. And I know it does work, because it works for me, but it I, I just me. wasn't necessarily being empathetic or sympathetic to how it helped him. Yeah. And he was looking for it, and he at three o'clock in the morning, he's, he's asking me, where's this product he's at? He's gotta go to work. He has to go to work. And I'm like, well, it could be in the car, it could be in my brown bag. I, I took it with me. I took the whole canister with me. <laughs> okay, I don't need all the alls <laughs> right now. <laughs> But I took the whole canister with me. <laughs> and um, so when he was looking for it that morning, he could not find it. And he's like, well, where did, you? I'm like, oh, I took it with me. It could be in the, probably is in the car. Now it's three in the morning, so I'm not like all like happy about being woke up. But I said, it could be in the car and it could be in my brown bag. So he's looking through there and then he says, Keisha. Where's the tangy? <laughs> and I felt like my mom was like saying my name. 
and um, he's, he couldn't find the tangy. So in the morning time at eight o'clock, when I'm up, I'm fresh, I decide I'm gonna look for it now. So I look for it, <laughs> it's about me now, because I'm fresh now. <laughs> so I look for it and it was in my brown bag. So I call him up and say, by the way, it was in my brown bag. I didn't say anything else. I was nice about that, I just left it at that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but anyway, so when he got home, he was like, you know, I apologize for that. I'm like, okay. And I, I think, I don't know what, it, so anyway, when I got to, on Thursday, I was given this scenario and he was, she was saying, you were really selfish. And I'm like, how was I selfish? He was like, because you know that product was working for him and it's helping him and you were selfish for not l just getting up and looking for it. And I'm like, well that, at the time, I don't know, I just, res I just took what you said and I didn't say much after that. <laughs> because certain times you need to like just walk away until you get the revelation, until you get the revelation of it for yourself. <laughs> and you've done that for me before and that's good, so <laughs> it's all good. So I was so happy God gave me that scenario with my sister because I was really mad at my sister for not hiding the book bag and not giving it to him at the end of the time. Mm -hmm. And it was similar in that way to what I was doing in a way. It was, because God would have not showed me that unless he thought it was similar. And it was like, thank you, Lord. And overall, I've just, the, the, clap, the Andrew Womack book, Self-Centeredness, is helping me with me, which is the most important thing. Me too. Me too. You know, I was just telling her, he, every morning he takes that. He gets up at three, you're sleeping. Why didn't you put it back where it was? <laughs> That's all you would have had to do. But she got mad at him, and it was her. <laughs> Just it was think. three in the morning. I don't <laughs> care if it was two. But she really, did you apologize to him? I did apologize to Good. him. Good. I did, yes. Good. Good. But you know what? If somebody said, why don't you just take some in a bag and bring it with you? Well, I just took the container and brought it with me. You know? So you do. So. <laughs> yeah, I heard something like you. Wow. Okay. You know, it's that, it's that. I one. have it in a bag. You, yeah. I, there's a solution. Okay. There's always a solution. When you take something, put it back. Yep. Oh. Yeah. Of course, I never did that. Let's not talk about it. Oh. <laughs> I got employees. <laughs> oh, that too. So, but you know, really, it, it worked out good. It did. She realized how selfish she was. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> anybody else have a testimony? Yes. Oh, yes. The one <laughs> nice and loud. I love it. Okay, it's kind of school related, <laughs> but I'll start by uh, saying I had to laugh at you with the little conversations with God. I have those every morning on the way to school. <laughs> <laughs> and he gets me to laugh. So. It's like, why always in the car in the middle of traffic? You know, it's people around, like, no, not here, but it's my quiet time. So I don't have the dogs or the cats and the kid bugging me. So, but then again, it's zoned out, no traffic bugging me either. So it's like, oh, but then I get to laugh at it. So, yeah. But I had a chemistry test, and me and chemistry have never gotten along. I was afraid I was going to fail it, but I'm like, Lord, please help me with this test. I was afraid I was going to fail it. Well, I didn't fail it. Amen. I was one point away from a B. Oh, one yeah. point away from a B? One point away from a B. Wow. I passed it. God is good, isn't he? Yes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But everything else I'm getting A's in. Wow. She, she, you know what? One day, one day she decided, that's enough of this crap. I'm moving ahead. Is that true? It took 24 years to continue my goal and my dream to go back to school and my career path to be a fire investigator and mm -hmm. with a little twist with a crime scene investigator. Mm -hmm. But good I actually you. see myself finishing this time. Good for you. Good for you. And it's good to have a family member helping you with this. Yeah, my friends and family are supportive. Amen. Amen. She'll kick your butt once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? 
anything else? Not at the moment. Not at the moment. <laughs> God just gets better and better and better. You know what? 24 years fulfilling it. At least you're doing it, aren't you? Anyway. Okay, let's do this here. Just give your heart to him. You give not because you want or have to. You give because you want to, because you love to. That's why you give. Do you realize that? That's why I give. So let's do that right now. Give yourself to him because you remember the works of your hands? The works of your hands. He blesses the works of your hands. The works of your hands is your tithing and offering. God is so good. Amen. Then communion. Let's just do communion. We're going to commune with him. Amen. I'll give that right back to you. Thank you, Jesus. Now remember what you're doing. Thank you, Lord. You know, if now go to that when you when you go through that little book. How many of you have this? Is that good? I, you know what? I've got one at church here. I have how many at home? I bought a pack of them that time. And I just spread them out all over and put them in different bags and take them with me. Because I'll take one, you know, like a, a, I turn to this here, which I like. There is no lack. For my God supplies all of my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. How can you fail? How can you fail? You cannot fail. But don't let money be your God because it'll, it'll mess you up. It'll let you down every single time. You know that? Yeah. Let God be your God. Let Jesus be your God. So, Father, we thank you. And as we break this bread, we have a covenant. We've already got everything that we have need of. The only thing we have to do is command and release your word, the seed, to our voice. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Let's eat. Thank you, Father. Oh, I love to take communion. I, when, when I'm driving along, I don't have the communion with me, and I'll pretend I'm doing it. Because I'm, I'm just remember. Oh, look what I've got with you! I got a covenant. Mm -hmm. You know, when we got married, I took his name on. Okay, my real name is Jeanette. Jeanette, Jeanette, Romanesco, Fredericksville. When you came born, became born again, you took God's name on. Amen. You took his name on. Now you belong to him. And he promised he'll take care of you. He takes care of me in the natural. God takes care of me in the spiritual and even in the natural. Isn't that good? So now, Father, we thank you because we have the blood of Jesus. And the blood of Jesus is what made us righteous. Thank you, Father God. I praise you and I worship you. We cannot fail, not with you. We are overcomers. We're more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. And I thank you for that in Jesus' name. Do you agree? Amen. 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 God is good all the time. All the time. You know, when I see somebody that takes money over God, I, I feel so sorry for them because they don't know that they're only going to have a little bit, they could have far more than what you could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. Do you know that? With Andrew Womack, he doesn't worry about money. He's a big sower. God takes care of everything. Mm -hmm. They're an overflow. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? What do I mean by that? Not only with, with you know, the building there, like Oral Roberts built that off, but in the overflow that when he lays hands on a little girl that was supposed to be died, 
little court Carrie, was it Carly Therese's daughter, and just released 3,000 years ago, you were healed in Jesus' name. And that little girl was healed. Amen. And testimony after testimony after testimony after testimony of God's word. Just think of that. We have it. It's already finished. You're going to chew on that until next week, okay? Good enough? Okay. Thank you, Father, in the precious name of Jesus. And they all said, Amen. Amen.